So one of the most important things that part three tries to instill is to verify that you are a clinically viable and safe medical physicist. So a huge part of this is understanding TG51 and to ensure that you can accurately calibrate the output of a machine. So with that being said, what is this equation? And for electrons, what corrections do the terms hold? What is your calibration depth? What is beam quality? Does it require a field change? What chamber should you use? And how would you cross calibrate a plane parallel and cylindrical chamber? So first of all, hopefully you recognize it. So this is TG51. So this is ultimately going to give you the dose to water for electrons. And so we have our gas chamber and we're taking measurements in water at a certain depth, but we want the dose to the water as though your chamber weren't there. That's ultimately what we're trying to do. And we have correction factors to account for this. So let's break this down. Now, uh, the M corrected is the raw reading, typically in nanocoulombs. You then have your P elect, the electrometer correction factor. You have your P ion, the ion recombination. You have P pole, the polarity correction. P TP, the temperature and pressure correction. So KQ, this is going to be broken up into P gradient, KE cal, and K prime R50. And then the absorbed dose to water calibr calibration factor comes from ADCL for your chamber, and that is just a number. So uh, P gradient there is a gradient correction factor that accounts for the effective point of measurement and allows you to shift your readings to the center. KE cal takes the chamber's calibration factor and applies it to electrons because remember we get our calibration factor and it's for photons because they use cobalt 60 but now we're using electrons so that accounts for it and k prime r50 accounts for variations in reading to the electron beam quality so what is calibration depth so the reference depth here is based on r50 so d ref is equal to 0.6 R50 minus 0.1. Now, if you have to remember that, I think that's a bit of a gray area. I personally, for my exam, I remembered that along with I50 and some of the other somewhat nasty equations because you never know. And remember, this is the absolute one thing you have to nail on your exam. You have to know everything about TG51. And so it's a worth using that brain bandwidth to remember these. So what is beam quality and does it require a field change? So beam quality ultimately helps specify your beam, the energy and how your beam interacts. So R50 is where the dose falls to 50% of the max value for 100 SSD and a 10 by 10 field size. This is found from I50 and that is using R50 is equal to 1.029 I50 minus 0 0.06. Again, I know I, I remember that. I, I would suggest to remember it, but they may not ask you directly. So, but it's also important to know that if R50 is greater than or equal to 8.5 cm, then the field size should move to... 20 by 20. And that is to maintain the lateral charge particle equilibrium. So that mainly occurs for electrons greater than 20 MeV, but it, we really need to look at that number and verify we don't cross that. So now what chamber should you use? So for electrons, it's recommended to use a plane parallel because it minimizes the variations in P ion, P pole, and P gradient with depth. So for plane parallel, P gradient is equal to one. And if you have 10 MeV or less, a plane parallel is preferred. Six MeV or less, plane parallel is required by TG51. So now how would you cross calibrate a plane parallel in a cylindrical chamber? So first thing, 
is you want to use the highest electron energy possible. And you want, ultimately, you're trying to find Ke cal and the absorbed dose to water calibration factor for plane parallel. That's that's ultimately what we're trying to do. So second step, so use a high energy. Second step is to find the K prime R50 for a plane parallel chamber using the R50. So that is just going to do using R50. And then Next, we want to cross calibrate at D ref using a cylindrical chamber. So the calibration is equal to the dose measured with the cylindrical chamber divided by the plane parallel chambers reading time K times K prime R50. So that is again, you're going to, I'm just going to do dose cylindrical or I guess the, this calibration factor. So what this Ke cal and NDW is equal to the dose of the cylindrical chamber, all right? And that is gonna be divided by the reading, and I'll just say M for the plane parallel multiplied by the K prime R50. So we want, we need this factor to do TG51 with the plane parallel chamber. So we're gonna find the dose with the cylinder, the cylindrical chamber, then the reading with the plane parallel. And then remember we found K prime R50 using the R50 and some tables and things within TG51. So you know all three of these values, you find that and then you were able to do TG51. There's also an addendum in TG51. I strongly recommend you to remember, but I think this, this is something that we don't do very often. And I think something they very well could ask. I think that's fair game. So if you have any questions, comment below. Thank you for watching and best of luck.